Our tour continues. We begin this part by gazing upon these statues on the Basilica's south side. Moving closer to the wall of the south side, we see, near the front, this baptismal font, which dates from the 1600s. It is still used today. Maria Clementina Sobieska lived in the 18th century and was titular Queen of England by marriage to James III, a claimant to the throne who was excluded because he was Catholic. Maria's monument looks upon this monument of her husband, James III, and their two sons, Charles and Henry. The entire family, Maria, James, and their two sons, are buried in the lower level below this monument. Pope St. Pius X is known as the Pope of the Holy Eucharist, since he extended the reception of communion to young children. His body is here, flanked by two statues. On one side is this monument to Benedict XV, the Pope of World War I. Scenes of carnage are healed by the Madonna and Child holding a palm branch of peace. On the other side is this sculpture of Pope St. John XXIII, shown here visiting the inmates of the Regina Chile prison in Rome. You cannot visit me, so I will come visit you, the Pope famously said. This work of art was completed in 1966. This artwork, depicting Innocent VIII, is the only existing monument that was transferred from the old St. Peter's Basilica. Innocent reigned from 1484 until his death in 1492. The chapel of the choir is used for praying the Liturgy of the Hours. The remains of St. John Chrysostom are located in a sarcophagus below the altar. Many more statues and monuments abound. Pope St. Pius X This great monument to Pope Leo XI, who reigned for only 27 days in 1605. And a monument to Pope Blessed Innocent XI, with figures representing faith and fortitude. Innocent XI himself, his mortal remains, can be seen at this altar of the Transfiguration. Above his remains is an excellent copy of Raphael's Transfiguration. The original can be seen in the Vatican Museums. We take our time to appreciate even more statues located here.
Pope St. Gregory the Great is an important figure in the history of the church. His remains are located in this altar. His name is preserved in the music codified in his day, Gregorian chant. Our tour continues with this monument to Pope Pius VII, who was kidnapped and imprisoned by Napoleon, and this monument to Pope Pius VIII, who was often sick and reigned for less than two years. Here Pius VIII is shown with our Lord, along with the figures of Saints Peter and Paul. Daily Mass is celebrated at the altar of St. Joseph. The chapel was blessed by Pope St. John XXIII just a few months before his death in 1963. This monument to Pope Alexander VII is accompanied by statues representing the virtues and an eerie skeleton holding an hourglass, warning us that our time on this earth is running out. The altar of Pope St. Leo the Great contains the pontiff's remains. Above the altar is a large and spectacular marble relief, depicting Pope Leo successfully warding off Attila the Hun in 452. What the Pope actually told the warrior to dissuade him from attacking Rome is not certain, but this relief suggests that heavenly powers, including the intercession of Saints Peter and Paul, had a hand in the proceedings. Please join us for part four, our last part where we will visit the spectacular nave and altar of St. Peter's Basilica.